some of this rubbish. Let's try that again. Welcome to Classical Foundations Limited. This is Dr. Alex Mosley doing the economics webinars. Today we're going to be looking at monopsony in a little bit more detail. And particularly, we're going to be looking at the strange case of the kinked supply curve. Uh, this is given in A-level textbooks and uh, undergraduate books in which the aggregate, sorry, the uh, average cost curve is the supply curve for labor coming up in a normal linear fashion. Whereas if you follow the red line, the red line goes out from four on this, on the y-axis for the wage rate, jumps up at three on the quantity, and then continues in a linear fashion. And we're going to be looking at the reason for this. So if we go back to a normal supply and demand curve for labor, we would have a normal market in which there is a nice equilibrium of a regular supply curve and a regular demand curve. And we know if we change the demand curve, we can change the price and quantity. Likewise, if we can change supply, we would also change price and quantity. That's kind of cool. Great. Now let's have a look at why this supply curve may be kinked. So just open up the pad. Now one of the reasons is, when we look at monopsony, we are considering, let's get that going, I seem to have lost it, right there we go. There we go, we are considering, let's go from the normal supply curve first of all, and a demand curve for labor. Now demand is your marginal revenue of product, and marginal revenue product, I don't know what's happening in my pen today, it wants to jump all over the place, D equals MRP, right. Now, let's take into account a normal equilibrium, first of all. Okay, it's early in the morning, so not quite straight lines yet. And weight rate and quantity of labor, Q1. Quantity of labor and the weight rate at the top. And you should be able to draw these almost blindfold. Um, I'm having a bit of trouble this morning because it's on my uh, graphic pad and it's first thing in the morning. Now, let's have a look what happens in a monopsony. Let's just rehearse that. Um, in a monopsony, the idea is that the marginal cost curve is higher than the average cost. Okay, so supply equals the average cost here. But the marginal cost to the company is higher than the average cost. Now, a company has an incentive to hire where the MRP is the MRC. So if we just take a different color and say pull that red in, okay, thank you, and drop down. The company is going to hire at Q2, and at Q2, let's stipulate this, this is where the marginal cost equals, I'm having fun this morning with this graphics pad, the marginal revenue product, okay. Now, at this point, the company is in a position to hire people at a lower wage rate, let's say W1. Let's uh, do W star for that one. And it is not going to pay people W2, which is where you think it would be where marginal cost equals MRP. But because there's people coming up to the company saying, we'd like to work for you, then we are looking at a lower wage rate at W1 uh, and Q2 employed. Now what happens here is that, as we saw from the first video, the union comes in, or the, the, the workers get together, and prefer to offer, let's go for a blue, prefer to offer or to negotiate for a higher wage rate than W1. Now this is quite an intriguing solution, because let's put this as WU, the wage rate that the union pulls in is higher than what the company would um, take people on at. And also QU is also higher than Q2. So we have an increase in the amount of labor and also an increase in the wage rate offered to people, uh, which is an excellent situation for those in work. So if you imagine you're an employee and you're in an industry where there is only one employer, and this is where we draw a little character the other day, uh, the monopsonist, and let's draw a little hat here. And our monopsonist is saying, right, I know you lot want to work for me. No, I can't get his eyes in. But you've got nobody else to work for. So you're stuck, and I'm going to negotiate your wage rates downward, which would then 
enable me to reduce my costs and you're sort of stuck with me at that point. So M, the monopsonist, is going to push down the wage rates, if you remember. And this is a kind of industry where we've got lots of people trying to get work. Um, I'm just trying to stick people because I'm going to draw two or three of these, right? Uh, and the negotiation bargaining power is in the hands of the monopsonist. But what we said is that the monopolist, sorry, the union can act as a monopolist and put forward a chap, let's call him Bob or something, to come forward and negotiate on behalf of everybody. And this can enable the wage rates to be pushed up to W because the monopsonist is also facing the problem that he needs people to work or she needs people to work for the company and is stuck as well if everybody decides not to work. So if all these guys tend to go on strike, then the monopsonist is in no other position but to hire them at a higher rate. Now, this is ultimately a win situation for the unions. And the monopsonist is also happy to take more people on because as long as the marginal cost of hiring is greater than the um, average cost of hiring them, then you are in a position to hire more people. And when we look at QU, we find that the marginal cost is indeed higher than the marginal revenue product gained from employing QU. So let's have a look at the marginal cost. So the marginal cost is WU. So just to make that clear, WU is the marginal cost because at WU, this is the wage rate that the unions have bargained for. So this is the negotiated settlement. And this negotiated settlement, uh, I think I'll read my writing there, the negotiated settlement is up to QU. So up to QU workers. And that's why the firm is quite happy to take people on up to QU because the marginal revenue product up to this point is greater than the marginal cost of hiring them. So let's see if I can pull a, uh, a highlighter on this one and just see what's going through the, the graph key. So hopefully this works, there we go. So we follow this through, the marginal cost is exactly the same wage rate as QU because to hire the first person, it's going to cost um, say five pound an hour or something, the second person five pound an hour. And this continues because this is the wage rate that the union has offered. So let's put some numbers on there. So let's say uh, in a competitive market, sorry, a competitive market may have been six pound an hour. The union managed to get five instead of the four pound that the monopsonist uh, would prefer. Now, as you can see, going back to the highlighter, have we got it? Yeah, there we go. The highlighter shows that the marginal cost of hiring people along W is exactly the same up to QU, at which point it jumps. So if the company wants to, excuse me, wants to hire more people above QU, it's going to have to offer a higher wage rate. Now, this wage rate is then enacted for everybody. And that's the key thing as to why the supply curve jumps. So let's say up to Q to QU, we're hiring at, let's say, £5 an hour. But after QU, so if we go greater than QU, we're having to, say, pay £6 an hour. But this is true for all workers. So suddenly the marginal cost curve of hiring an extra worker leaps up and then continues on in a normal a linear or quadratic fashion, um, heading northeast, as it were. Right, it's a bit scrappy today, uh, bigger part on that. So let's have a look at this solution then. What have we got? The monopsonist wants to hire at, so M wants to hire at, yeah, it's jumped again. He wants to hire at W1 at £4 an hour. The union negotiates £5 an hour. Now this is true up to QU workers. And this has increased the number of workers from Q2 to QU. So there's been an increase in employment at this stage. We've got N for employment. An increase in employment. Now, this is rather exciting for the unions. It's exciting for um, economics to point out that union activity can actually raise wage rates. And they are all earning a higher rate. Now, this is contrary to the normal supply and demand issue uh, when we look at imposing a union wage or a minimum wage in which it really re causes uh, unemployment. Now, the problem is with this model, if we're going to evaluate this, 
uh, which we need to do. 